I am very excited to welcome and introduce Claire and Sarah again today. I'm also a little sad as this is their last session with us, for now at least. As always, it will be interactive with ideas and strategies to facilitate inclusive, diverse, and equitable classrooms. Claire Steele and Sarah Smith have worked in language teaching, teacher training, and teacher development globally in a variety of contexts. They co-founded and are directors of Eltonics, which is an online teacher development and mentoring service for teachers and schools. At Eltonics, teacher and student voices are prioritized to develop classroom teaching and learning. Today, we will look at ways to develop our empathy and critical thinking skills and to try to explore issues of social justice. It will show us how we can adapt tasks by giving students choice over what they do with the text through choice boards or chili challenges. Claire has worked in EFL, ESL as a teacher, trainer, manager, and consultant worldwide, but mainly in the UK, Australia, Colombia, and Greece, and is now based in Portugal. Claire is interested in fostering creativity and critical thinking in the classroom, reflective practice, and adapting materials to create a more dynamic and engaging learning experience. Claire supports inclusive classroom practices for all English teachers and students. Sarah has worked as a teacher, trainer, manager, and mentor in Senegal, Japan, Ecuador, Turkey, Thailand, and France, and is now based in Greece. Her areas of interest are teaching creativity, holistic child development, and encouraging a sense of progress through learning to learn techniques. She is an advocate for inclusive classroom practices, which will provide a safe learning environment for all teachers and students. Take it away, Claire and Sarah. Thank you, Michelle. Wonderful. Thank you so it, much, Michelle. It is kind of bittersweet, isn't it? It's our last. It's our last webinar, but we're really looking forward to it, and I'm sure it won't be our last forever. Right? We'll be back. We'll be back. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Like a boomerang, we'll be back. <laughs> All right. Um, let's um, let's say hello to each other, shall we, in the chat? Can we get everybody to just uh, maybe say hi and where they're tuning in from in India, whereabouts you are? I don't know. Can you see the chat, Sarah? I can't. See I any. can. Yeah, I'm waiting to see where everybody's tuning in from. So just to start us off, I'm tuning in from Greece, from Athens, Greece. And Claire, what about you? I'm tuning in from a little village in the north of Portugal. Okay. Bangalore, super. Excellent. Interesting. Okay. So super. Claire, what Hello, are we going to do today? Let's have a look. <clears throat> Let's have a look and hello to everybody, wherever you're tuning in from. OK, so let's have a look at what we're doing today. So it's all about inclusion and diversity in the classroom. And we're going to base this webinar on these four questions. OK, so the first one is what is teaching for inclusion, for diversity and for equity? Two, what does an inclusive and diverse classroom look like? Three, how can we use storytelling to champion diversity and inclusion? And four, what does a framework for a social justice lesson look like? So everybody can see, I think, on the left-hand side, we have three emojis. And if you've tuned into our webinars before, you know exactly what I'm going to say now. <laughs> but if you haven't, these emojis are confidence emojis so please type in the chat uh, number one if you're not so confident and you could learn a lot from uh, this webinar two you've got some of this and but you're tuning in to find a little bit more of what you can do in the classroom and three you've got this you're you're fabulous and you can teach it to somebody else and possibly take on this webinar so in the chat box Having a look at these four questions, where are you? Number one, two, or three? 
And of course, if you're tuning in from Facebook, you can write your one, two or three in the comments. Uh, we've got a two. We've got a one. Lots of ones and twos, huh? Twos, yeah. Okay. Excellent. So Claire, what are we going to do first? Which question will we be answering first? So we're going to look at what is teaching for inclusion, for diversity and for equity. So Sarah. Okay. Yeah. Have a look at this classroom. Okay. Mm -hmm. What do you notice about the students in my classroom? Mm, okay, so they're all young learners. They mm -hmm. look very engaged, Claire. So well done for, for that. Um, but they're all quite different, right? They have yeah. different perhaps abilities. They mm -hmm. have different ethnicities, perhaps, maybe even different first languages that they're bringing to the classroom. So they're all very, you know, they're individuals, aren't they? Exactly. And we all have different identities, don't we? So we all construct and perform our identity in social settings and in communication with others. These identities include race, race ethnicity, social class, language, religion, age, abilities and disabilities, gender, sexual orientation and so on. And I think it's really helpful to think about identity as being pluralistic rather than singular, meaning that we have um, many identities to us, not just one. Mm -hmm. OK, so let's just reflect for a little bit on our context. Think about and this is for the course that for the participants uh, in on Facebook or in, in the webinar here. Think about where you live and your classroom context. Who faces discrimination? And you can write your answers in the chat box or in the comments below in Facebook. Let's see. Students, okay. Women, mm-hmm. Racial discrimination, yeah. Neurodivergent, mm hmm. Mm. Girls, newcomers, slower learners, okay. Interesting, yeah. It's interesting the comments on uh, introversion and shy people, right? Mm. Because, yeah, society, I guess, does have an expectation of, you know, everybody being slightly extroverted. So it's a really interesting comment, I think, from the, from the chat. You've hit on some of the key um, identities outlined in the NEP. Now, I'm sure the NEP does not need any introduction to our audience. Uh, this is the National Education Policy that was published in 2020. And this is what the NEP says, right? It says that school enrollment drop-offs are more severe for scheduled caste students and differently abled students, okay? So we need to think about why these students are leaving school. A lack of access to quality schools, poverty, social mores and customs, and language, okay? So that there's also language or linguistic discrimination that can occur in different contexts as well, have had a detrimental effect on rates of enrollment and retention, especially among scheduled castes, castes and bridging these gaps is a goal of the NEP. And that would involve us in the classroom as well. Tribal communities face disadvantages at multiple levels due to various historical and geographical factors. Minorities more generally are underrepresented in school and higher education, so enrollments are dropping off there too. Of course, we spoke about neurodivergent children, so children who are neurodiverse or children who have special needs. We need to provide those students with the same opportunities as neurotypical students. And of course, quality education for all girls. So some of our participants did mention girls mm. and women as well, right? So you've identified everything and perhaps a little bit more that, than the NEP has done. All right, then. So what do we do then as teachers to make sure that we are catering for all of these different identities in the classroom? It's a huge question and it seems like it requires a huge answer, but there are certain things that we can absolutely do as teachers. And some of that lies in these concepts. We've got three here on the screen. We've got teaching for inclusion. 
that's number one. Teaching for diversity, that's number two. And teaching for equity, which is number three. And Claire, I've got a little task for you and for okay. the participants, okay? On the right, we've got some descriptions. I'm going to mm -hmm. read them and I want you to tell me if it describes teaching for inclusion. So, for example, if you think A is teaching for inclusion, you put 1A. If you think it describes teaching for diversity or teaching for equity. OK, are okay. you ready? Yeah, participants, you're going to help me out. <laughs> OK, so the first one is this. Um, this is a classroom that celebrates differences in students' identity, celebrates it and does mm. not endorse any one identity as the norm. It takes active steps to avoid marginalizing or othering those who are different. What do you think this one is? We've got lots of twos coming into the chat box. Do you agree with that, Claire? I think I do. Yeah, teaching mm. for diversity. Okay. All right, lovely. Well done, kids. What about this one? This is a classroom which promotes fairness, equality mm -hmm. and justice and gives the students the tools to become good citizens. Do you think that's teaching for inclusion or teaching for equity? Mm. Got lots of threes coming through and I think that's right. Yep. Super, very good. Yeah. So teaching for inclusion then is a classroom that tries to make all of these identities visible, yeah. whether that's in the images that we use or in the text that we use, and it creates a supportive environment for all learners. Okay. Now there's lots that we can say on all three of these, but we mm. can also make sure that we, we bring all of these elements together in our classroom and include inclusion, diversity, and equity. And the English language classroom, or indeed any language classroom, is a really, really good place to do this because as we construct language, we also construct our identity, right? We perform mm -hmm. our identity through language. And what better place to do it than when we're learning a language? And Moore says this, in their 2014 publication, they say, we must give students space to speak honestly as themselves. And this is an, an affordance which is seen as crucial in the development of second language proficiency. And later in this webinar, we're gonna show you how we can bring these three elements together. All right, so Clive, I've got another challenge for you here, okay? Of course. And participants, please help Claire out. Now, I'm going to show you an activity or an action that happens in a classroom. Okay, mm -hmm. imagine an English language classroom. And I want you to tell me whether the example shows an inclusive, diverse and equitable classroom or not. Okay, okay so the answer is either yes or no. Yes, exactly okay. right. And participants, you can write this in the in the chat box as well. Okay, okay. All right, here's the first one. The teacher uses materials which include only images of white people. Hmm. What do we think? Yeah, no. For sure not, right? Okay, what about this one? Uh, students are forbidden from speaking their L1, that's their first language in the classroom. Uh, lots of no's coming through, which I agree with. Okay. What about this one? Um, materials include characters who are disabled. Mm -hmm. Yes is coming through, which I agree with. Okay, that could be images, it could be text, it could be celebrating their unique strengths as well. Absolutely. Yep. What about this one? Students are asked to debate whether certain people have rights or not. For example, whether women should work or stay at home. Mm, uh, we've got lots of yeses coming through, but I think that's a no, isn't it? Yeah, Claire, why do you think this is a no? That shouldn't be debated. It should be it, it should be included. Yeah, it's a given, right? Yeah. Women have rights. We don't need to debate whether women should stay at home or not. Exactly. Yeah, absolutely. So instead of debating people's rights, it might be more talking about what rights should everybody have. Yeah. Good. 
Okay. What about this one? The school register labels students as only male or female. What's coming through? No, no's are coming through, which I agree with. Absolutely, yes. So this doesn't really cater for any students who are gender diverse or gender creative or gender non-binary, right? Which we have to take into account. All right. Yeah. Students read a story about a child from a different ethnicity to their own. Sounds like a yes to me. Super. All right. What about this one? Materials include images of ethnic minorities in relation to your your culture, where you're from, your context, doing menial tasks or labor. Mm, no, is it coming through? And I agree with that. Absolutely not. Yeah. OK. What about this? Students make comparisons between their L1 and English. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. Kids. All right. And finally, students are asked what their preferred name and pronouns are. Let's see. Lots of yeses coming through, which I agree with. Mm, yeah. OK. Yeah. So students might not go by the name or by the pronouns that are recorded on any official documents, right? They might have a different way of identifying. Maybe they use a gender neutral pronoun. Maybe they use a nickname and so on and we've got to be really mindful of this okay yeah what what do we see Claire though a lot in English language classrooms do we see elements of the <clears throat> of the crosses traditionally in EFL unfortunately yes unfortunately yes quite a lot yeah okay all right now one way that we can kind of help with this is if we start looking at social justice frameworks and social justice pedagogy and this has become quite a hot topic mm. I think lately okay so here I've got a definition of social justice frameworks for teaching remember that we're going to show you this a little bit later on but first of all I want you to help me Claire and the participants yep. with the missing word okay, okay. You yeah. ready? Yeah. So in a social justice framework, curriculum is specifically chosen to broaden students. What do we think? Weakness world. I think world is getting their world view. Yes. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So in a social justice framework, curriculum is specifically chosen to broaden students' worldviews through incorporating different ideas and ch mm, it's got to be challenge or challenging. Yes, good. So we need to incorporate different ideas and challenge opinions, right? Well established yeah. opinions. So instead of uh, what do we think that is? give you a clue ig ah uh, ignoring yes instead of ignoring very real world issues a social justice education framework addresses it and encourages students to exercise ah uh, some kind of thinking what do we think that is active analytical coming through i think i like that yeah, very good. So a social justice education framework addresses it and encourages students to exercise analytical thinking, critical thinking, in other words, right? Yeah. yeah. Schools which are committed to social justice in education play co close attention to their choice of curriculum and how it could be used to uh... <laughs> enrich, enlighten, Ooh. engage, enhance. They're all good. And they're all good, aren't they? Yeah. They're all good. They could yeah. all fit to expand students' minds. Absolutely. Exactly. Yeah. So what does this look like in the English language classroom? We're going to be exploring this in just a moment. Super. OK, so we've asked, answered the question, what is teaching for inclusion, for diversity and for equity? So going back to the emojis here, numbers one, two and three, in answer to that question now, where are you on this? Are you one, still don't get it, two, I'm, I'm getting there, I've got a few gaps, but I'm getting there, and three, got it. Threes, twos and threes. Threes. Lots of threes, that's good. Yeah, okay. What okay. are we doing next? 
The next question we have is what does an inclusive and diverse classroom look like? And this is an interesting question because there's lots of literature out there which says, OK, a classroom, inclusive, diverse classroom needs to be respectful. It needs to have equality, it needs to have all this compassion. But it's quite yeah, yeah. vague, really. Um, what does an actual classroom look like? What does it let's have a look now at the next slide that tells us what this looks like particularly from the students point perspective okay now okay. I've got a little task from you Sarah <laughs> okay I've got a similar one we've got you can see here we've got missing words okay mm -hmm. and these are all going to finish the sentence that that starts with in inclusive and diverse classroom students okay okay all right okay. so get the uh get the participants to help you and i think they're already helping you they are okay. yes so, so students have a, opportunities to discuss the fact that everyone is different are encouraged to mm, these differences i think we've already got it celebrate yes absolutely super and students are introduced to characters who have differences and learn how to mm, with these Help me out. Begins with an E. Engage. Embrace. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Close. I think it's empathize, right? Yeah. Empathy, compassion. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, students are helped to mm, that differences do not make someone better or worse. I think we've got unanimous. Understand. Yeah, absolutely. And students frequently explore, explore these topics. What's this? We talked about it just a second ago. Mm -hmm. We've got it here, social justice. Super. Lovely. And they're given something in their learning in terms of level or challenge or preferred task. Choices, yes. We've got Super. choices coming through. Chance, okay, there's some other good options here. But yeah, given choice. Yep. And students with learning differences and disabilities ascend are by visuals, less than maps and choice. We've already got the answer. Thank you, Devendra. It's supported. Absolutely. Super. OK, so you can see these little factors here in green, Sarah. Yeah. OK, we're going to move to the next slide. You see them down the left hand slide. OK, yes. These are what we've just talked about. This is what inclusive diverse, uh, di diverse classroom looks like. OK, now I'm going to show you some activities. OK, and you can tell me which parameter they match. OK, OK, so get the, the participants to help you as well, Sarah. They can write in the chat or in the comments. One, two, three, four or five. All okay, right. So here's the first one. Students look at the achievements of people who are different from them. Hmm. Achievements. Huh? So something that they've done, which is pretty impressive. People are saying one, the participants saying one. Yeah, I think they'll agree with them there. Yeah, so celebrating those achievements, absolutely, okay. super. Okay, what about this one? Students count the ways in which they are different to their partner. Hmm, that's a really interesting one. It's quite nice it's as nice, well, isn't, isn't it? it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, there's so Beautiful many. We've got... language point too there. Yeah, we've got empathising coming through, number two. Mm -hmm. Got degree of choice, number one. It could also be celebrating differences as well, though, right? Could be, absolutely. Yeah, okay. What about this one? Students compare their own experiences to others. Mm -hmm. What do you think that is? There's a lot of twos coming in here. Yes, because mm -hmm. you have to empathize, right? This is how That's you right. experience something. Did I experience it in the same way or a different way? Absolutely. Lovely. Okay. Empathizing, looking at other perspectives. Yeah. Okay. Students read stories about children who are different to them. Okay. What do you think? I've got five and three. Got some twos, we've got some fours. Yeah, they, it, it could kind of go in different places, I guess. Um, I guess they're just reading. 
they're not necessarily celebrating anything. So for me, that's maybe empathizing again. They're kind of trying to understand someone else's lived experience, which is different to their own. Super. But yeah, other options could could be, depending on what you do with that, right? It could fall into other categories as well. Absolutely, yeah. This okay. one, students are given a menu of activities that they can choose from. Uh, we've got lots of fours here. Absolutely. Good. Yeah. So we've got the choose and the choice. Yep. Yeah, super. All right. Next one, student answer questions like, what would you do if that happened to you? How would you feel? What do we think? Again, choose. Yeah, a lot of empathy, isn't it, coming through? Mm -hmm. How do you how do you empathize with others? What would you do in that case? And Absolutely. so on. Again, okay. about others' perspectives. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And what's the next one? Students design a campaign to fight for a cause. Mm -hmm. Three is coming in. Absolutely. Yep. You've got your social justice coming through there. And students do a chili challenge. We're going to do this a little bit later, aren't we, Sarah? Yeah, we are. What do we Again, think that is? Lots of threes coming in, but for this, this is a degree of choice. Students choose their level of challenge, right? Which yeah. we'll we'll take a look at in just according, a moment. Yeah, according to the number of chilies they choose. Yeah, we'll look okay. at that in a second. And students are given brain breaks. We did this in uh, one of our sessions before, didn't we, Claire? We did, yeah. Yeah, people are saying Five. This is for students with SEND. Good. Absolutely. And students are shown the aims of the session and encouraged to reflect on these. Again, we've touched on this before in recent webinar. Yeah. And again, we've got lots of fives coming through. Let's check how well we did here. So these are the answers. Nice. Okay. Reading stories could be about social justice. It could be about empathizing. It really depends what you do with that story. Mm -hmm. And we'll have a look at an example later on. And as Claire says, we're going to explore chili challenge that you could use in your classrooms a little bit later on as well. Okay. All right. So we've just answered number two, haven't we? What does an inclusive and diverse classroom look like? So again, back to the emojis. Where are you? Are you number one? Are you number two? Or are you number three? Got lots, lots of threes. twos. Ah, lots of threes, your end. Yeah. A lot of twos. I've got loads of threes coming through. Have you? Okay. Yeah. Super. All right, then. So. What are we going to do next, Claire? Now, number three is all about storytelling. How do we use storytelling to champion diversity and inclusion? Let's have a look. All right. I'm really excited for this because you, Claire, and the participants are going to be my students in a moment in a demo lesson, okay, a demonstration lesson. And you are eight years old. Do you think you can do that? No problem. <laughs> right okay so you're eight years old in my lesson but I want you to keep your teacher hat on all right yep. because as teachers <laughs> at the end of the demo you're all going to think about the following questions first of all how the lesson demonstrates inclusion and diversity okay how does it appeal to children with special educational needs differences and disabilities and how I, the teacher, makes use of differentiated tasks. So is there an element of choice there? Okay. So just to check, Claire, are you a student or a teacher right now? I'm a student. How old are you? I'm eight. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Okay. But as a teacher, what will you reflect on at the end of the demo? So the, the teachers, we're going to keep our teacher's hat on and we're going to reflect on how the lesson demonstrates inclusion, diversity, how it appeals to children with SENS and how the tasks, tasks were dif differentiated. It gave us a little bit of choice. Good. So all in all, this should be an inclusive, diverse and equitable lesson right it should, yeah with those reflective questions yeah <laughs> okay let's see how we do then are you ready yeah hi Claire hello how are you good good Claire what can you yeah. see what's this I can see a clock 
Mm, yeah, this is our lesson today. Okay. What do you think we're going to do first? Mm, uh, we're going to talk. We're going to speak. Yeah. Good. Can you do this for me? Yeah, we're going to speak. We're going to talk about colors. Yeah. Do you have a favorite color? I do. My favorite color is blue. Aha. Uh -huh. All right. So maybe you can tell us about blue, Claire, later on. And then mm -hmm. what are we going to do? We're going to write. Think? About what? Colors. Mm, we're going to write some words to describe colors. Okay. Do you know any words to describe blue? Your favorite color? Um, blue is like the sea. It's nice and calm. Very nice. Okay. What do you think we're going to do after that, Claire? Mm, we're going to read. Okay, can you do this with me? Yes. What are you going to read about? Colours. Yes. We're going to read a story about colours. And then after we read, Claire, what are we going to do? We're going to write. About can you do this? Yeah. Write about? Colours. <laughs> <laughs> yes. We're going to write about the story. Okay. Okay. What are we doing now? We're going to talk about colours. Very good. Okay. Now, this is the story we're going to read today, Claire. It's called Mixed. What mm. colours do you see? What colour is this? Red. Uh-huh. And this one? Yellow. Get on this one? Blue. Get on which favorite. one was? You? Yeah, this is your favourite, isn't it? Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. Now, Claire. Yeah. Find something red in your room and Ooh. show it to the class. Go run and get something red. Ooh, what's that? It's a mouse, but it's not a real one. <laughs> okay, fantastic. Can you find something yellow in your room and show it to the class? Oh, what's that? It's a pen. Very nice. It highlights things. Very nice. And now find something blue in your room mm. and show it to the class. Ah, be careful, Claire. <laughs> what's that? It's a stapler. Yes. Okay, be very careful though, okay? Okay. It hasn't Careful, got, Claire. Yeah, it hasn't got it, any staples in it. Okay, okay. Just put it down, though, okay? As usual. All right. <laughs> so let's take red, Claire, first of mm -hmm. all, okay? What does red look like? In the money. It looks... It looks like love. Ah. Very mm. nice answer. What does red sound like? An alarm. Woo, woo, woo. <laughs> okay. What does red smell like? Smells like fire. Aha. Uh -huh. What does red taste like? Strawberries. Mm -hmm. Do you like strawberries? Yes. Yeah. I had strawberries for breakfast. <gasps> Did you? <laughs> what does red feel like? Hot. Oh, yeah, don't touch it. Very good. Claire. Okay. Now, of course, with my students, you can explore this further. And I gave them this worksheet and they colored here with their favorite color. And then they wrote what it looks like, what it sounds like, what it smells like. So you can do a lot of things with this, okay? They can mix colors and, and so on. But anyway, I won't do this with you now, Claire, okay? Okay. We're back to being a student again. So Claire, what did we just do? We talked about colors. Good, what are we gonna do now? We're gonna write some words to describe colors. Can you change my clock hands? Well done, very good. Good. Okay. Now, these are the reds. Okay. Mm -hmm. They're in our story. Okay. Now, I think the reds are very energetic. 
Yes. How would you describe the Reds? Um, passionate. Mm. Okay. What about your friends in the chat box? Did they help you with any, any words to describe the Reds? Loud. <laughs> Bubbly. Bubbly. Mm. Dangerous. Oh, okay. <laughs> Dangerous. Lovely. Loving. <laughs> Super. Okay. What about the yellows? I think the yellows are joyful. What do you think? Mm, I think they're bright. Ah, uh, yeah. We've got, lo- we've got happy, sunshine, smiley. Okay. Beautiful. And what about, this is your favorite group, the blues. I think the blues are very calm. I think they're cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think they're blissful and pleasant and soothing. Yeah. Nice. Lovely. That's why I like them. (laughs) All right. Now, Claire. We've got the reds, the yep. yellows, and the Oop. blues. Yes. Okay. So you're going to choose how hot, how spicy you want this activity to be. Okay. Okay. So if you want it to be just a little bit spicy, you're going to choose one chili. And how many words do you need to think of? Three. Right. So you choose three words to describe the reds, three yep. words to describe the yellows, Three words to describe the blues, okay? Okay. Now, if you want more spice, which is two two chilies, how many words do you think of? Five. All right. And if you want it to be super, super spicy, your eyes are watering, (laughs) which is three chilies, how many words? Seven. Uh Aha. All right. Now, Claire. Yeah. Which chili will you choose? One, two, or three? Super, super spicy hot. Super, super spicy hot. You want to choose ch- three chilies? Yeah. Okay, so you need to think of seven words to describe reds, seven mm. words to describe yellows, and seven words to describe blues. Okay. okay. Participants, help me out. Reds, come on. Got love, power, rose, warm, hot, danger, anger. That seven. You said passionate earlier, didn't you? Yeah. Alarming. <gasps> Alarming. <laughs> one more, one more, hot. one more. Just hot. All right, lovely. Now, of course, in the classroom, I'd give you then time to come up with your words for yellows and come up with your words for blues. Claire, do you think you chose the right level of spice? Was it too spicy or was it just okay? Um, might have been a little bit too spicy. Mm. Mm. Okay, so yeah. what did what do you think you should have chosen? Uh, number two chilies. Two yeah. chilies. I struggled okay. a little bit there. Yeah, <laughs> that's okay. All <laughs> right, well done. Now we talked about colours. What did we do just then? Um, we wrote some words to describe colours. For example. Um, red is hot and uh, alarming and passionate. <laughs> Great. And what are we going to do now? We're going to read a story about colours. Yes. Are you excited for Super this? Super excited. Are you? Okay. Yeah. Now, what, what were your, what's your favourite colour again, Claire? Blue. Are they in the story? Do you remember? Yes. They are. Okay. Are you ready? Yes. Okay. Now, just a note to our participants here. Obviously, in the classroom, we we actually have the physical book. Today, we're going to be showing you a YouTube video. We hope the sound is okay. All right. It's somebody reading the story as we go along. Let's start. Can you hear this, Claire? Next, a colorful story by Ari Chung. In the beginning, there were three colors, red, yellow, and blues. Reds were the loudest. La, 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 la. Yellows were the brightest. Ding. And blues were the coolest. Beep, beep. Ever- the 
Reds, what were they, Claire? The loudest. Can you show me that? La, 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 la. <laughs> and the yellows? Um, I can't remember. The brightest. The, the br yeah, show yeah. me. The blues were the coolest. Can you show yeah. me this? With my sunglasses. Very good. All right. Here they are. One lived in color harmony until... Mm, color harmony. They lived in color harmony. Did they live together? Yes. Were they happy? Yeah, they all look happy. Don't they? Yeah, they look very happy, don't they? Okay. Until... Color harmony until... One afternoon when a red said, Reds are the best! Uh-oh. Was that a good thing to say? No. Mm, okay, and can you tell me, how does the little yellow and the blue look here? They look really sad and shocked. I know. I know. What do you think will happen next, Claire? I don't know. Doesn't Let's look good. Let's find out. The yellows disagree. No, we're the best because we're the brightest. And the blues were too cool to even respond. The colors decided to live in separate parts of the city. Ah, uh, do they live together now? No. How do they look, Claire? They look kind of unhappy and sad and, yeah, it's not okay. colorful. It's not colorful at all. But one day, a yellow noticed the blue, and something happened. I feel so happy when I'm near you, and I feel so calm when I'm with you. Yellow and blue became inseparable. Mmm. Yellow and blue are inseparable. So, Claire, they're always? Mmm, together. Yeah, that's right. Do they look happy now? Yeah. They do. Life felt so vibrant. But not all the colors were happy about it. Colors shouldn't mix. I don't like that yellow effect on blue. That blue isn't bright enough for yellow. But yellow and blue loved each other so much they decided to mix. <gasps> Claire, if we mix yellow and blue, what do we get? Green. Yeah, so who do you think we're going to meet now? A green baby. <laughs> Together, they created a new color. They named her Green. Green was bright like yellow and calm like blue, but really, she was a color all her own. Everyone was fascinated. I've never seen anything like her before. She is so cute. Even the grumpy colors fell in love with Green. Can I hold her? The colors began to see new possibilities. Soon, other colors mixed and mixed and mixed and mixed. There were so many new colors and a lot of new names. Don't forget your glasses, lavender. Be careful, Jay. Have fun, Amber. The old neighborhoods of Redville, Bluetown, and Yellow Heights didn't make sense anymore. Everyone wanted to live together, so they rebuilt the city. The new city was full of color. It wasn't perfect, but it was home. The end. Mm-hmm. Claire, look at everybody in the city. I love it. What's your favorite color? <gasps> There's so many. I There's love all of them. Right? They're fantastic. Okay. So did you like the ending, Claire? Yes. It's all colorful and everybody's happy. Exactly right. Exactly right. Well done. Okay. Now, Claire, let's think about the story that we just read. I've got another chilly challenge for you, okay? Mm -hmm. Can you help me write about the story? What was the story about? Okay. okay. If you choose one chilly, a little bit spicy, I've given you some sentences to complete about the story, okay? Mm -hmm. If you choose two chilies, ooh, a little bit more spicy. I've given you some ideas, but you have to complete a lot by yourself. Now, three chili, super duper spicy. I'm going to write everything. What do you want to choose? Oh, I'm going to choose. Can you choose one? You're going to choose 
one shilling. Okay. Yeah. Now, Claire, of course, if you were really my student, I would give you lots of time for this and I would be yeah. monitoring you. Your friends might have chosen something different, but at the end of the activity, I would always ask you, did you choose the right spiciness level? Yeah. Okay. Maybe yeah. you would say it was just right, or maybe you would say it was too spicy, not spicy enough, and so on. Okay. Mm -hmm. And my final question to you as a student, Claire, is this. You can ask mm -hmm. the participants to help. How does mixing with others make you happy? What do the participants say? How does mixing with others make you happy? Because we share together and we learn a lot from each other. We care Super. about each other. Yeah. Lovely. Good. Mm -hmm. And what does it mean to live in harmony with others? <gasps> what do we think? Acceptance, sharing, understanding each other, having human connection, peace equality good togetherness lovely ideas lovely ideas and of course my students were telling me a lot in their l1 and that was okay because then we would we were um reformulating those and putting them then into english at the end all right so claire one more time what did we do first today we talked about colors and then and then we wrote some words to describe colors and then then we read a story about colours. We did. And then finally? And then we wrote a summary of the story. Good. And what was your favourite part of the lesson, Claire? What did you like the most? I liked the story the most. Mm. Would you like to read the story again? Yes. Would you read it to your family or your friends? Yeah, I'm going to read it to my family, to my Super. dog. To your dog, fantastic. We can learn a lot from <laughs> our dogs. Yes, good. Yeah. All right. Now, of course, at the end of, of that session, and that, that, that was a series of lessons, in fact, what I did was I give my students a choice board and it looked like this. So these are post-story activities that I wanted to do with my students. And I asked them to choose what kind of activity they wanted. We've got narratives, so we've got descriptive, informative, persuasive, and creative. And within each of those options, you've got sub options, okay? So Claire, if you were a student, which one would you choose from these options? Definitely creative. I'd create a new color. By mixing yeah. many different I think ones. if you mix too many it will always be brown but yeah <laughs> definitely right okay yeah so this then gives the students the opportunity to choose what they would like to do with that story where they would like to go next okay love it all right then so let's come back now as teachers to our reflection questions. And remember the first one was, how did the lesson demonstrate inclusion and diversity? Mm -hmm. How did the lesson appeal to students with SEND, that special educational needs, differences and disabilities? And how did I as a teacher make use of differentiated tasks? Okay, uh -huh. so let's go to the first one. What do students learn from this story? What's the moral of the story? Okay, I'm going to invite participants to write their answers. <clears throat> to live in harmony. Um, that sharing is caring, unity is strength, that we can all live together in harmony. Yeah, yeah. it kind of disrupts inequality, doesn't it? Exactly right. Yeah, exactly. And we're not talking about one specific thing here, are we? We're just talking about differences in general. Yeah. And how that how how, you know, yellow is like you make me so calm and blue is like you make me feel so happy. And we that's bring what's so clever us. about it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It reaches everyone, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah. So why is it important then for us as English language teachers to explore such stories, you know, in primary, secondary, and even, you know, high school, university as well? Why is this uh, an important thing to explore? I'm going to hand that over to the participants as well. Why is it important to explore 
stories and messages in the secondary make students more empathetic uh, to I think to, to stop discrimination to create open-mindedness um, yeah. empathy and working together good yeah super yeah okay and are there any other books that you know of Claire that we could use in the classroom that promote inclusion and diversity just like mixed did do you know of any yeah have a look at these so we've got um these books here for primary school and you can see that we've got mixed in there as well and for secondary school there's so many <laughs> Um, that we've just given you a link here that you can click on and have a look uh, oh for yourself. Super. All right, then. And of course, our slides will be made available to you so you can you can have these. All right. Absolutely. Now, my next question is this. OK, and remember mm -hmm. that we did do a webinar on this ooh, quite a while ago. But just to jog your memory, how did the lesson appeal to, to children with special educational needs and disabilities differences? OK, yeah. Now, um, we've got here at the SEND, so we've got visual impairment, for example, and what students with visual impairment need is to, to have some things described. OK, what is happening on the screen? Yeah. Do you remember any examples from the demo, Claire? Yeah, you were constantly uh, describing and checking in with me, eliciting from me what I was seeing yeah exactly do they look happy do they mm -hmm. look sad and so on and then as you were saying this a, a student with who is who might be visually impaired would be able to follow good yeah super what about um dyslexia so students with dyslexia they really need any verbal instructions to have a written backup provide writing supports by giving sentence prompts you could record information audio format mind map pictures and so on anything from the lesson that you remember yeah so the, the the instructions were written weren't they yes and also that mind map the vocabulary mind map is a is a example yeah good and of course you had those sentence prompts in the second chili challenge as well that would allow students to choose what they what they need Absolutely. okay attention deficit disorders as your adhd mm -hmm. one big thing here is keeping instructions clear and simple yeah, so you didn't, you graded your language, you didn't talk too much, so there's low teacher talk. Yeah, good. What about um, on, it's for students on the autistic spectrum, mm -hmm. um, that what, what helps those students is giving a plan for each lesson using pictures, images, symbols, anything you remember there? The clock for sure. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, good. And the clock had images as well. There were images to back up the senses, you know, how does red uh, smell, mm -hmm. how does red feel and so on. You can actually get the students playing with these, actually touching these yeah. if you're in the yeah. physical classroom. Yeah. And then uh, dyspraxia. So asking students questions, check understanding of instructions, breaking down tasks into small components, signposting the different stages of the lesson, and when the lesson is nearing the end or the review stage. Any examples from the, the demo? The def definitely the clock again, right? Um, yeah. And also kind of the story was broken down and checked for understanding. Yeah, yeah you were eliciting all the time from me. Exactly. Yeah. And you can ask your ICQs as well if you if you need to, you know, what, what are we reading about? Uh, what questions are you answering and so on? Yeah, constantly checking. Good. And then finally, what about differentiation, differentiated tasks? Mm, there were two that stood out. So there was the choice board. Right at the end, I could choose what I wanted to do and I chose creative and also the chilies, the chili challenge. I could choose my level of uh, spiciness, my level of challenge. And it's, um, I really like this because it takes away from that kind of weak, strong discourse and, and, and just has this instead. Exactly, yeah, that, those, um, those words easy and difficult are quite charged, aren't they? Because what's yeah. difficult for me might be easy for you. Yeah. So if we just think of it in terms of spiciness and get away from those words, it kind of yeah. helps all yeah. of our students okay Absolutely. right so what all did right. we just do <laughs> we definitely looked at storytelling <laughs> to champion diversity and inclusion um let's have a look at the emojis having a look at that do you think 
that do you feel confident to use that in your classroom or stories like this one two or three hundred percent mm. <laughs> that must be a three You've got lots of things coming through <laughs> super okay excellent thank you so much um and okay we've got our last question haven't we what does a framework for a social justice lesson look like and as you said before sarah social justice pedagogy is gaining a lot of attention and a lot of focus recently and will continue to do so i think but there isn't really a particular framework to use particularly for primary learners actually so this mm -hmm. framework has been designed by us Eltonics, and this is what it looks like okay here's a framework for a social justice lesson now as you can see we've got the five steps we've got seeing feeling thinking acting and reflecting this is what we can do in the class uh, to to encourage this social justice so i'm going to read these definitions sarah and you and the participants would you mind telling me which one they match okay can you do we'll that give it a good shot all right so yeah. we've got a first let's have a look to develop empathy critical thinking and emotional awareness to provide tools to allow for an understanding of others mm. so what do we think participants do you think that's seeing feeling thinking acting reflecting a lot of choose mm -hmm. yeah good so feeling isn't it super yeah Okay. Let's have a look at B, to encourage problem solving and creativity skills. What do we think? Is that seeing, thinking, acting, reflecting? What do we think? Some threes coming through for thinking. Yes. Yeah, Great. absolutely. They're those thinking skills, cognitive yeah. skills. Super. And five, to reflect on how our understanding and feelings have changed. Mm -hmm. I think we've got an important word in there to reflect yes. on. Good, yeah. yeah. So everybody's saying five. Okay, yeah. reflect. That's our reflecting stage. Super. We've got. Uh, should we do D to sensitize students to human rights issues to establish what they know? Yeah, we've got seeing coming through there. Yeah, to Super. sensitize. Yeah, absolutely. So then, of course acting is to develop good citizens and to disrupt inequality mm -hmm. okay so taking this okay as our framework let's have a look at some example activities that are classroom based so having a look at the stage of seeing let's have a look at these activities so what we could do is we could read a text about, for example, religious violence and discuss. We could watch a video about the exclusion of people from different castes and discuss. OK, so it's all about seeing this. And then for feeling, we could have um, students uh, role playing characters from the text and explore from their perspective how they might feel. And we could do some hot seat activities and ask characters questions. So there would be someone in the hot seat who is that character and the others ask them questions. So again, mm -hmm. it's about feeling from others' perspectives. Thinking. So what we can do here is we can find out what characters, what key characters say. OK, so, for example, activists from special specific casts. We can investigate the reasons for the problem and we can brainstorm ideas to raise awareness. So really going into our, our thinking skills here. And then moving to acting, students could design or stage a mock intervention, for example, some street art, some, some protests, um, some articles, and they could plan or perform street plays as well to raise awareness and finally reflecting thinking about what they have learnt and how they feel and what they will do in the future 
it's reflecting is an important stage, isn't it, Claire? Because it kind of um, helps us see, helps us understand if we've changed our point of view from the seeing stage, right? What we might yeah. have thought before the lesson. Absolutely. That reflection is really crucial in everything that we do, of course. Yeah. Okay. Super. Okay, so if you want to have a look at our references, here's the list of references. And this is including uh, story based methodology for primary EFL classroom. There's some fabulous books there. And I guess I think this is going to be available on PDF for you after the webinar. Um, we've got some storybooks for primary here, some links here, and storybooks for secondary. Um, and I think Michelle's putting some in the chat as we speak. There are so many fabulous so, so ones many. that could be that could be used, right? As well as from your local context as well, obviously. Yep. And finally, that's us. We're Eltonics. Um, you can find out more about us on eltonics.com. Or if you'd like to email us, you can email us at team at eltonics, eltonics And we have a Facebook community of teachers that share um, ideas, uh, lessons, etc. Just have a chat together. If you want to join this community, you can join on Facebook through Eltonics Connects. Thank you so much for all your contributions. We really, really hope this has been useful for your continuous professional development. Wow, thank you. That was a lot, a lot of learning. So many new ideas. Thank you, uh, Claire and Sarah. If you have any questions, please uh, type them in the chat box. Uh, I have a few questions. One was, the difference, the subtle difference between teaching for inclusion and teaching for diversity? It's a really good question, Michelle, because I think what we've seen in English language teaching in the last uh, maybe 10, 15 years or so is, is very much a, a push towards teaching for inclusion. And if you remember, that's the, the visibility, right? Making certain um, identities more visible than they were before. So that could be certain ethnicities or it could be disabilities, you know, somebody in a wheelchair that wasn't typically included in a course book before, but now course book and material writers are including them more and more. The thing is, it's not enough just to include. It's not enough just to make visible. It, we have to go further. We have to go deeper and challenge um, social injustice or inequity that we see whether it's in the materials whether it's in our society whether it's in our own kind of um you know in in our own thinking or in our own families and and so on and we need to really equip the students to be able to challenge um inequality and that's where your teaching for diversity comes in because you are really celebrating you know how how it is to be different and how this enriches everybody and you know what activists um have achieved you know from particular castes or particular ethnicities and so on how they fought against discrimination and also for equity because you're really underlining the fact that you know, by developing empathy and by developing these critical thinking skills, we want to create a world that is equitable for all, right? So it's it's important to have all of these elements in there and not just the inclusive bit where you show an image or you read a text without commenting on it. Um, and I think that's where now, as Claire was saying, social justice pedagogy is really gaining traction and attention worldwide and in mainstream education and so on and that's something that we should really be looking at more and more I think yeah and it doesn't stop in the classroom does it it's, it's a whole it's a whole school culture as well and everyone that's involved in that culture yeah so I it's a 
classroom change, school culture change, societal change. I mean, we're hopefully reaching some shift where we are looking at these, uh, you know, very closely and we're trying to follow it so that we see people like us and a true uh, reflection of society, not just, you know, one sort of perceptive uh, perception. Uh, there's a question yeah. from Sonia Sharma. I have to teach energy consumption and respiration in human body in the science class and connect wow. it with inclusion and equality in a global context. How can I do that? <laughs> <What>? <laughs> Very specific question to science. Yeah, I, it's a difficult one to answer because I'm not a scientist. So I I'm not sure. I I I, I can't. What what would the link be? I think if it's anything medical, one thing, and again, we're, we're, to reiterate, Claire, I'm definitely not a scientist or a medical expert in any way, so I don't want to lead anybody astray. But something that I've read a lot about is how um, gender is sometimes not fully represented in science or in our medical book. So the, I, I read a study about, um, I think it was male surgeons operating on female patients and the risk to the patient was higher than th there's, there's a, there's a lack of knowledge around female bodies and so on. So I don't know if it's to, if it's to do with biology, perhaps you would go down that route a little bit more, discuss topics like this. I mean, specific to respiration, I'm not entirely sure. Um, but I think you could definitely springboard into other discussions, you know, in terms of, I remember a lovely um, activity, um, which is something to do with um, you don't tell the students the gender of the characters and you say something like um, um, a, a, a a child is in, involved in a very minor accident, like a they fall off their bike or something, and the 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 father of the child is not available, and the child gets rushed to the hospital, and the surgeon is like, "Oh, this is my child," and it ends up that the, the fact that the the woman is the surgeon, but nobody gets this. You sort of lead them astray a little bit and get them to think about their assumptions of who's the surgeon and who's. That I've seen thing, that perhaps. I've seen that I've seen that you sort of look at your biases and then you um, make a conclusion uh, there is one question I saw here about um, it's from Anirban Bhattacharji could you please suggest some safe and subtle ways to teach including every possible diversity into the class where society at large is very communal and against diversity, essentially. Mm. I think, I think that it, this, I think inclusion and diversity is very holistic and very humanistic, and it starts with the behaviour of the teacher towards the students and encouraging the behaviour of the teacher to students to students and back from student to teacher. And that needs to have humility and compassion and love and caring and tolerance and understanding. And I think that's that kind of classroom atmosphere, that environment, it needs to start there, doesn't it? With how, how there's a mutual respect for each other and, and bringing in at uh, texts and uh, discourse from from other perspectives is all going to help towards on that path mm. and it, it doesn't have to be um necessarily overtly political in a way it could it just yeah. can start with your students so I saw yeah. a lovely um activity presented um by um her name's Dr. Nair Ibrahim, and she was talking about multilingualism and identity as well. And she had the children draw themselves and in different parts of the body place their languages. And, you know, a child had put Farsi, I think it was, on their heart because that's what they speak at home and uh, German on their hand because they were forced to learn German at school or so these kinds of things. So it doesn't have to be to do with languages. It could be to do with other elements of identity but allowing your students to 
to bring that in, creating that safe space to, to, to let them tell us who they are. Um, and listening to that and respecting that, it doesn't have to be a further discussion necessarily, but a sort of, you know, mm. th this is how we are. I mean, I, I'm thinking also of, you know, children who perhaps have ADHD and who can't sit down for a long time and just saying, what do you need? Maybe the child says, I need to sometimes get up and walk around the classroom. And that's just something that is done in the classroom and not questioned. Um, so providing those opportunities um, and that doesn't have to launch into a, a discussion necessarily, you know. If, yeah, if and, you... and picking up on discrimination that might happen in the class as well, yeah. whether it be gender or race, and kind of, you know, not stopping the class, but but making that a teachable moment as well, highlighting that. How do they feel? Trying to stop the otherness happening in your classroom. Thank you. We have a few more questions which are uh, sensitive. One is from Bharat Bhushan. I'm noticing discrimination based on vernacular language influence in my language classrooms as I have students from different parts of India. How can I improve my inclusion and social justice? I remember reading an activity that a teacher did in the classroom where um, every day, um, students, I think this was in South Africa, every student um, taught three words of their own language to the other children. Um, and they did it in a very playful, colourful, you know, way. And each, each um, language was celebrated through doing that quite simple activity, inclusive activity. We have one question from Facebook Live from Shush Pawar. How do you check your students' prior knowledge on diversity as they may come from different backgrounds and what methods do you think can be used? I think it's about that. Um, it's, it's, it's going back to that social justice framework that, mm. we, that we showed earlier. Um, there isn't necessarily a framework in EFL like that, which is why we kind of sat down and discussed what might this look like in a language classroom. And I think the first step is just getting our students to see and realize and be aware. Um, now, this might generate um, comments that are kind of argumentative, perhaps if they've been taught something different or been exposed to something different but it's then what you do after that I think that's really really important so first of all getting them to actually see evidence of social inequity or discrimination and then empathize which was the next step the feel is really really critical because you need the students to be able to think about wow what if that what if I was in that person's shoes what if that was happening to me and how would that make me feel so I'm not sure it's, it, you know, certain perhaps internal prejudices might come out and it might come even come out of us. This is why it can be a little bit uncomfortable for us to do as well as teachers, but it's important that we do do it and recognize it. But it's all about then what we do in terms of helping students to develop empathy, compassion, um, mm. and this really strong sense of justice as well. What, what, is, what is wrong? what is right that we that we should be doing so yeah. undoubtedly these you know some students will be challenged by this but that's the whole point of it that's why we we should be doing it right there's um there's also this social justice pedagogy that's being talked about a lot there's there's something that's not being talked about as much but I think will be in the future which is something called compassionate pedagogy um, which which focuses on um, understanding every, you know, understanding perspectives, and I think um, everybody has a perspective. There's no truth. Everything is f from your perspective and from your your background, your opinion, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So, kind of bringing that into the classroom, and it's not about you're right, I'm wrong. It's about listening and understanding. I think we all come with our prejudices and biases and it's time for us to reflect on them and, you know, look at our classroom and see how we can support all the learners equally. I think 
most of the time we just look at completing the syllabus and trying to finish teach as much as we can uh, well as i think now we are looking at learning from a much wider perspective where they actually learn and feel supported through the teaching the pedagogy the materials uh whatever I, we have another question from uh, dr ansari what pedagogy can be used for ensuring inclusion in higher education the the same in fact so what yeah. while we we kind of demonstrated a primary lesson um you can still apply those steps to a higher level lesson you know um we're looking at things that are like text or videos and exploring the messages behind those and deconstructing them and so on you can follow exactly the same steps and you know michelle i was going to to add something to what you just said as well the language classroom is really good for this because when we're when we're communicating in a language that is not our mother tongue or one of our mother tongues, for example, there's um, a psychological distance there, which allows us to look at something perhaps less subjectively and more objectively, which can be really useful when exploring such such um, such topics. So a language classroom is, is really great for this you know at higher levels you can be exploring biased language you can be exploring language that discriminates and thinking of better language that we can use as an element of creation then that certainly can be done in the secondary classroom as, as well um yeah. so there is a lot that you can that you can do with this and you can follow a very similar framework but obviously your content would be different I think, in fact, as well, social justice pedagogy, there's a lot of literature um, associated with higher education, more so than I think primary and secondary. Primary, yeah. yeah, definitely primary, yeah. But secondary and higher education, there's a lot of, lot of literature out there for social justice pedagogy. Because also, like you said, uh, they can do more in terms of the acting and reflecting. Uh, well, as you're younger, you're still looking, you know, at the seeing, feeling, those kinds of things in your framework that you outlined. Uh, there was a question from Sonali about, uh, it was more, what do you think of the classics in literature being rewritten uh, to be more inclusive? Uh, you know, <laughs> Roald Dahl and Roald Dahl. there's a lot of controversy around that recently there is but in some mm, it, it in some respects i think it's it's actually quite a valuable exercise perhaps because these writers are fantastic writers i mean i grew up on roald dahl and and to some extent enid blyton as well but roald dahl was i loved getting a new book from my grandmother um, you know, if I'd done my homework and all of this kind of stuff. Um, th there is a sort of respect to the writer there, but I think we've also got to realise that actually some of the language in those books were rather discriminatory, especially um, descriptions of women in the book. I remember the witches, you know, and they was all focused on how ugly and how gruesome they were and, and so on. This is a real problem for girls and self-esteem. Um, so I think that if we can at least... Yeah, whether it's whether it's a rewrite or an, an, a different version of it or whether it's something that we explore in the classroom, it certainly needs needs to be done um, because we internalize some messages that comes from the, this this literature that is discriminatory. And I'm not saying that the writers were or intentionally, but they were certainly products of their time. Right. Yeah. So I think when we choose a book, at least at the very least, we need to be aware of whether there is any kind of prejudice in that book that we either deconstruct or talk about with the students or kind of say, let's update it. Um, it's, it's a it's a great teachable moment, isn't it? It's it's yeah, it's, it's a great you know base for a lesson in itself. Yeah. We have some more questions related to hyperactivity, and there's one related from uh, Sudensha Guha. Uh, you know, you the, rethink your teaching strategies because clearly the child is not interested in your teaching. Maybe <laughs> they have some medical side effect and the child has not got much sleep the previous night. Uh, so, you know, you don't know the medical history. It probably 
we discussed last time uh, ADHD and things like that. I mean, do you want to just quickly revisit some strategies? Um, I well, I think first of all, we we can have a diagnose, as you just said. We we unless we're trained to do that, but generally speaking, I speak for myself. I'm definitely not trained to to diagnose. I think we just need to ask our students what's going on and we could do that in a variety of ways we can explicitly ask you seem very very tired today that's okay sometimes we get tired what's making you feel so tired um without judgment or perhaps it's about giving them very subtle ways to tell us how they're feeling I think you know last time or a couple of webinars ago we were using like a little emoji cards you know how are you feeling right now and they can just kind of show us without voicing it um but I think, you know, if, if you've got students who have a lot of pent up energy or students who are really, really very tired, then to, to allow them to, to go at their pace. So it's either about burning a bit of energy off, could be with a brain break or letting them move around the classroom rather than sitting down like this. Or if they're very, very tired, then letting them be because we Let don't know what's rest. Yeah. yeah yeah what what's going on and i know you know we might have from our school administration you know or or whoever saying but your students have to be uh, engaged all of the time that's impossible nobody's engaged all of the time we just can't so i think just asking our students very gently what's going on and true, then trying true. to accommodate them giving giving the, the, the like we we demonstrate as well you know giving them a choice of what of of what they would like to do so is it one chili or three chilies if they're feeling quite tired yeah. then maybe they choose one and that's okay true the yeah. choice boards and the chili challenge uh thank you very much that was